Hi everyone. After making tutorials on Affinity Designer for iPad, let's start fresh on the desktop version this year. We'll begin with something simple in vector format so you can understand how to use the pencil tool, apply colors, and work within the designer persona. Hopefully, this will be useful for you. Alright, let's get started. First, add a new vector layer and move it underneath the sketch we're going to draw. Select the pencil tool, turn on use fill and auto close, and start drawing. I will provide as much detail as possible, step by step. You don't have to finish everything in one stroke, just keep going. To use sculpt feature of the pencil tool, look at this example. In the context toolbar at the top, you'll find the sculpt mode option. As long as you start your stroke on the existing path, you can keep extending and closing the shape as needed. You must start drawing on the curve and finish on the same as well. For this video, I'm using Affinity Designer version 2.6 beta. They've added a new use line style icon for the pencil tool. Previously, you could turn the stroke color on and off directly from the color panel and just keep drawing. But now, if use line style is enabled, even if you turn off the stroke color, it will still apply a stroke to new shapes until you manually deselect it. This is a slight change from version 2.5. Alright, let's keep drawing. Just go with the flow and have fun. Easy ways to select shapes and nodes. Hold down the control key to select, or control plus shift to select multiple shapes or nodes. This way, you don't have to constantly switch between the node tool and the pencil tool, making your workflow much faster. Click the add icon to merge them into a single shape. It will make selecting shapes easier for you. You can also merge other shapes with the same color to keep things organized. Areas with the same color should be merged into a single piece. Let me adjust my workspace a little, it feels too high for me to work comfortably. I don't like moving my hands too much. So, I'll go to view menu customize toolbar, move things around to where I like. Drawing with a tablet and a screen tablet is slightly different. Using them for long periods may cause shoulder and arm pain. And I have been using Wacom Intuos for a long time and close it when I'm done. If you want to see how to adjust the user interface, check out my From Zero to Affinity Designer video on my channel. Make sure your layer order is correct. What goes in front and what goes behind. You can use the toolbar at the top to arrange them or manually move them up and down in the layer panel. My trick is if you're going to draw a shape, like hair on the head, control click to select the head first. Then draw the hair, it'll be on top of the head. Did you see that? I accidentally merged the head and the hand into one single shape. The hair is covering the hand. Just control click to select it, then click the divide icon in the toolbar at the top to separate them into individual shapes. Now, control click to select the white parts of the eyes, then click the insert inside the selection icon in the top toolbar. Use the shapes tool to draw a circle and add the black pupils inside the white eyes. This works just like clipping mask. Hold down the control key to duplicate. Keep doing it this way continuously. Until all parts are completed, fully and beautifully as desired. If you're not yet familiar with drawing or the steps involved in vector mode, I recommend starting with a simple template and adapting it. Learn a bit more about the tools, and I believe you can definitely do it. I don't draw very accurately compared to the sketch, I keep adjusting it as I go. There are no strict rules. 
If you want to draw something or add anything, just go for it. Next, let's refine the details. I'll add stroke lines for the eyelashes and adjust the pressure profile in the stroke panel. You can add more pressure points and drag the start and end points to refine the thickness. The pressure setting stays applied to both the pencil tool and pen tool until you change it again. You can even save your pressure profile for future use or reset it anytime. If you're using stroke lines for details like this, don't forget to expand the stroke before sending your work to others. A cute cartoon always looks better with rosy cheeks, don't you think? Without them, it feels a bit too empty. I like minimal and simple style work with good color tones. Personally, I still have a lot to learn. And no need to mention AI. The key to working with vectors is pretty simple. 1. Draw a shape. 2. Click insert inside the selection if you want to add shadows, highlights, or extra details inside. That's it. Just two main steps. Don't forget that you can also use brush tools in both Designer Persona and Pixel Persona to add extra details. They work well together, depending on what you need your design for. I want this work to be in vector format. So I chose the basic solid brush, which can be expanded into a shape. Alright, I'm happy with it. Everything else comes down to your ideas and creativity. You have plenty of tools to choose from, and the process isn't that different. I mostly use this for stickers, t-shirt designs, product illustrations, and sometimes even full illustrations. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful in some way and that it helps guide you in your work. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.